Hi, often I need to generate a large number of normally distributed random values in Excel. And I can't imagine that I'm the only one who needs to do that. So in this video, I'm going to show you what's possible with doing that. I'm going to break down the formula that does that into its component parts of uniform and normal distribution operations. And then I'm just going to build out the original demo from the ground up. So let's flip over to Excel and let's get started. So here's an example of what we're going to do. So up here in the upper left, we have configuration options of mean and standard deviations. Um, and uh, mean of zero, standard deviation of one, so that makes this a, a standard normal distribution. And uh, down here we have a sequence of 10,000 integers and alongside of which I've copied this formula, norm m rand uh, mean and standard deviation uh, for 10,000 random values. And here they are distributed in the histogram. And for example, I could make the standard deviation wider and that shows in the bin uh, values. Um, I could offset the mean to something else and that shows in the bin values as well. I just put that back to zero one and call it good. So first of all, what's in this formula but a RAND function? And let's go in and, and look at the uniform distributions and figure out what's going on there. So I'll call this sheet uniform. And I want to generate 10,000 random decimal numbers between 0 and 1. So I'm going to make a sequence of 10,000. And there we go. I'll drop in the formula text so that you can look at it. And then generating the 10,000 random decimals is easy. I just put rand in there. Formula text and drop it down. I'm also going to format it as a number to make the histogram we're about to plot easier. If I want to generate random integers between a couple of values, the rand between function can do that for you. And I'll do it between 1 and 100. And I'll give you the formula text for that. So there we go. Let's make a couple of histograms and make sure that it's uniform. Select data. I'm going to select the RAND function output first. And this, the, the bins look pretty good because they don't have so many digits. They overflow their slot. But there's this weird little bin out here, and, and I want to fix that. So I'm going to double click on that, and that will open up. Well, it, the format axis was already open. If I double click on that, it gives me the axis options directly. And I select the number of bins to be fixed, and that gets rid of those problems. So it looks like this is a normal distribution. Let's look at the RAND between. Select the data. And once again, we have that weird little bin off to the side. So I'm going to adjust the number of bins. And the height of the bins that begin with a 0.5 is slightly higher than the other bins. But other than that, it looks uniform. So that's good. So I'll call this normal. And I will have, a, and then an X column, a probability column, and a formula column for this demo. And I'm working, I'm going to be working with the standard normal distribution. So that means that a particular function we're about to use, norm.dist, is going to take the number of standard deviations we want to look at for the probability um, result. So uh, let me show you what I mean. 
So I'm going to be testing one standard deviation, again, because this is a standard normal distribution, mean equals zero, SD equals one. I can do that. Norm dist of that, the mean of zero, SD one, and I want the cumulative distribution function. So it gives me the amount of the curve that's less than that X point. In other words, when you say true, you're getting the cumulative distribution function. If you say false there, it gives you the density function. So I'm going to look for negative one standard deviations. Norm.dist of that. And uh, true, once again, for the CDF. What am I doing? Sorry. It's getting late in the evening. So there I have my probabilities that correspond to uh, one standard deviation and negative one standard deviation. So I'm going to go ahead and show you norm.env, which is the inverse of the cumulative distribution function. So what do I mean by that? I'm going to copy probability down here. And make an X column. And then I'm going to do norm.inv of probability that mean zero standard deviation one. And look at that, this x message was with that x. And if we do norm.inv probability that, mean 0, sd1. And look, that x matches with that x. So that's how you can use the norm dist to get the cumulative distribution function and the norm inv to get the inverse of that. Um, one other quick thing is we can reproduce the rule that uh, of the amount of the normal curve that's between the, the first in, the negative first and first standard deviation simply by subtracting these two probabilities, and that's 68.2%. So there we go. So what we're going to do now, well, what I'm going to do now is kind of fix this up and make it pretty. So what we're going to keep on doing is, is for this norm env, instead of feeding a fixed value, we're going to feed it a random value. So uh, let's do that now. Build. And I'm going to go ahead and make it configurable. Mean of 0, SD of 1. Make a sequence of 10,000. Because I want 10,000 values. And let's see, I'm going to do the norm env trick. So norm.env rand probability zero, or actually no, take that back. I want to fix it to my configuration. So I'll do an, uh, a fixed reference to these two cells and drop this down. Format it as a number. Give you the formula text. Make this just a bit nicer. And let's finish this off with a histogram. So 
select data. And there we go. There's our normally distributed random values. We can take a look at that and generate new values all the day. day and um, we can change the SD, widen it. We could shorten it or make it more narrow. And there you go. So I hope this video is helpful for when you need to generate normally distributed random values in Excel. Thanks for watching.